So we're looking at the problem of consistent inputting of data here. We want to control how it's input. And we had started by doing what's called an embed code here from a plugin called Embedit Pro. And this was our short code that we put in, and it was taking this custom field and inserting the price, $25, right into there so it shows up in our post. So now what we want to do is we want to extend this. We're going to create new fields, like for example, model. So I just do enter here. Remember, I'm going to keep the same name, product underscore model. Okay, and then let me grab my text from here. And I go to here, and I paste it in. And again, I want to add that custom field. So now we've got two custom fields. And we're going to continue adding these on and doing this. All I have to do is copy this short code again here. And I would put it into here. And now I would just change this to model. You get the idea. And we're going to keep adding these short codes. I'm going to come back and we'll have done the whole thing. And then I want to show you how we're going to use that to create new posts. Okay, so you can see now I've replaced everything in here with short codes. And those represent these custom fields down below. There's all our text. Notice under product features. I've kept the UL, which means an unordered list. I've kept the basic list structure there. And all I'm doing is putting each individual line for the list in here with its HTML coding on it. Because we want product features to always be a list every time. And there we go. So we've updated this. And let's look at what it looks like on here. There shouldn't be any change for us. There we go. Everything remains the same because. We're literally putting in the custom fields exactly the way we did before. Now, here's where the real beauty of this comes in. Let's copy all of this and let us add a new product. And we're going to call this the winter plate. In HTML mode, remember, in the editor here, in the text editor, we're in HTML mode. We paste this in. Okay. We're going to get rid of our image here. Remember, we want to keep this margin zero here. So we make sure our cursor is right there in the middle. This is really the toughest part of it, is putting in the image, just to make sure you've kept it the same way. So let's insert here. And we'll go grab another plate. There we go. And we're going to go insert it. That's great. Medium, left, none, and we insert. OK, we've got our new one here. And so we're going to publish it, OK? Always remember to put it in the right category before you publish. Let me just update that. OK. So if I go back to here, and I now go to home, I'll see our winter plate. Now notice, there's nothing there. Everything's blank. We've only got some of the elements that we had, like model number and only. So if I go back over to here, I've got to remember to put in my custom fields. Now, because we've already created those custom fields, there they are. They're already in our select menu here. So I can go into the description and say, this is a great plate for winter. OK. And then I add another custom field. Drop it down. There's features, and I would put in. This is about the only thing you have to remember for HTML is this is a list. So I'm going to put a list item opening tag. And I'm just going to put strong. Close off the tag. There we go. And then I'm going to put easy to clean and close it off. Don't need anything more than that. Closing tag, remember closing bracket there. Add another custom field. And we're going to do our material. And we're just going to call it stoneware. Add a custom field. So you see how much easier it is to do the data entry for this. That we don't have to worry about its model number. Let's say it's DL673. 
And the price for this one, now we do product price, is say $35. So now we've got our items here. And again, if we needed to update these, very easy to do. You just go in and change the custom field. Let's update our whole host. Always remember to do that. Even though the custom fields are all showing there, you still have to update over here. And now we refresh. And bingo, we've got everything in its place. So there you've got consistency of entry. And you've got a model that you just keep copying over and over again. You've not got to remember how to put in those short codes or anything like that. It's just simply the image that you're going to be changing in here. And all the rest of this just stays exactly the way it is. And the beauty, of course, again, is that we can change in the style sheet. We could change colors of this, for example. We could make this non-italic. We can do a lot of things just using style sheeting because we've got these classes here as well. The only drawback we have right now is, let's say a year from now, you decide that you don't want to have things this way, that you'd rather have the feature down below and the PayPal button placed in a different spot. And in other words, we wanted to change the layout. Even with all this sophistication, we still would have to go physically to each post, to each product, and change the structure. Now, it might not be so bad in this case because with these embedded short codes, we could simply create a new structure and then we could go through and copy in this new structure into each one. But of course, we wouldn't have to touch the content because that's all being pulled from here. So we're getting a fairly good level of sophistication, but it's not that great to have to go in and change every single post. And that is where theme templates come into play. We're going to show you how to create a theme template that you would only have to change one time. You could have a thousand products. You would only have to change that one template in order to change this layout. And at that point, we really get into the power of WordPress.